Welcome to Education Today. I'm Brianna Keebler of Armstrong High School in the Armstrong School District. Today we are going to take a look in at a valuable group that helps out in the school district in many ways every year. You may have heard of a program that, such as Do Re Mi, which puts instruments in the hands of students who otherwise may not be able to afford them. You may also have heard of a number of monetary grants that teachers are awarded every year. These grants help bring cutting edge initiatives alive in our classrooms. The group that is responsible for all of this is the ASD Foundation in partnership with the district's very own faculty and other major community businesses. The ASDF is a nonprofit organization that raises money to provide Armstrong School District students with enriching, exciting programs that might not otherwise be funded by local tax dollars. To talk more about this today, we have the organization executive director with us. Welcome to Education Today. Oh dear. Please tell us briefly about yourself and the rules with the foundation. How long have you served and any kind of background you'd like to share? Okay, well, my name is Chris Garitano. I am the executive director and uh, current president of the ASD Foundation. I've been a member and part of the foundation now for about eight and a half years or so. Um, I kind of came in to help uh, start working with the foundation after um, the current executive director had left uh, the district. Um, so uh, I typically serve as the district's multimedia technician. Um, I work with the technology department. I'm in charge of um, everything related to the TV production program outside of teaching it. Um, and I also as part of my job is serving with the uh, ASD Foundation. Okay. What is the main objective to the ASD Foundation? Well, the main thing that we exist for is to help our students of the Armstrong School District out. So, um, you know, we exist to um, provide opportunities for students that, and teachers that may otherwise, um, you know, may not happen. So our main objective is just to raise as much money as we're able to raise and then fund different projects that uh, ultimately benefit this, the students and faculty of the school district. Okay. Tell us some programs that ASD Foundation offers and some stories that, about how they are benefiting students. Well, there's a series of different programs that we have. Um, our two primary ones are the Do Re Mi program. Um, which puts instruments into student, hands of students who otherwise may not be able to afford them. Um, how that works is, is uh, we have basically anybody um, from our very own band who's retiring instruments to members of the community can donate instruments to us. It doesn't matter what kind. We've accepted everything from snare drums and bell kits to uh, you know, your typical clarinets and trombones and flutes and uh, alto saxes, things like that. Um, but we take those instruments in and we have a partnership with uh, Murphy's Music Center and they will uh, kind of go over those instruments, make sure that they're playable and cleaned up and then they come back to us and then uh, our elementary music teachers actually will give those forms, um, give donation or excuse me, they will give uh, request forms uh, to their students that they, they identify as uh, ones that need an instrument. and. Um, they come to me, they get screened, and then we, we give those instruments to the students uh, on a first come, first serve basis. So right now I think we have somewhere between 60 and 70 instruments out in the district. Um, typically they start with third and fourth grade students, and the instrument is theirs to play so long as they're a member of the school district. So um, as long as, you know, they don't have to come back to us until they've either moved out of the district, changed instruments, or stopped playing music altogether. Um, or graduated. So it's theirs basically for their life, uh, their life in the district. Um, the other big one we have is our educator, educator Innovative Grant Program, um, which is a program where teachers can write grants to the foundation. Uh, every year we have a golf outing. That's our biggest fundraiser every year. Uh, we also have an EITC program where we're certified through the state of Pennsylvania to, be, uh, to accept EITC donations, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we funded something out at West Shimokin several years ago now. Um, it's, a, it's a weather bug weather station, and it's mounted on top of their roof, but it's actually something that has, um, at the time it was purchased, was one of the higher end options they had. And it actually is something that can be used district wide because anybody in the district, basically that has a network connection, can tap into that system 
and use the information that it gathers. And it gathers everything about the weather from wind speed and lightning and um, different storm systems coming through, temperatures, things like that. And it also gives the district a little bit of um, identification on or notice I guess on news stations because some of the news stations will pull up that weather bug when they do their weather reports. Um, we also funded an iPad card initiative um, which is complete now but that took uh, several years for us to complete and what that did was we bought iPad carts um, which was actually an idea originally uh, brought to us by a teacher in the district who had written a grant for iPads. So those iPad carts uh, what we ended up doing is placing two in each primary building um, and they're still being actively used. Um, we also did an initiative um, just recently with Chromebooks and another major thing that we did was um, we helped purchase uh, some needed equipment to get West Shemokin's TV studio up and running for what they do down there. There are many ways in which the foundation receives and can receive money from a variety of donors. For those who may be interested in donating, how can they go about that? Uh, sure, there, the, we have a couple of different ways. Um, first, for anybody who's an employee of the Armstrong School District, if they wish to donate, um, which we always encourage, um, they can do something called payroll. They can do donate to us through payroll uh, deduction program. And what that means is, is if they choose to, they could do a one-time donation or they could do a, um, a week or a, a, a bi-monthly donation. So every time they get paid, they could say, well, I want a dollar out of every check to go to the ASD Foundation. And at the end of the year, they will get, um, there will be a report that they can print out, and that report will show how much money they've donated to us. And since we're a nonprofit organization, that, can, that is considered um, something that's able to be written off at tax time um, because, it's because of the money that's being donated. So they can do that, again, per check, or they can do that one-time donation out of their check. Um, it's also an option to do it just for a year or you can do it for the lifetime as long as you work in the school district. So kind of the plea we always give is, you know, all the, all the grants that we award are specific, are given to the teachers who write them. So we always encourage our teachers, um, if they're able to, to, to donate, you know, a buck a paycheck um, to go to the foundation. And if you think about it, the amount of things that we can do with, if, if every teacher, let's say, in the district donated a dollar, out of each paycheck, so two dollars a month, that's what a, a cup of coffee maybe. If every teacher in the district did that, the amount of money that we would raise throughout the course of the year could fund some very large, very expensive projects that otherwise may never happen. Um, you know, and, and so we always encourage, if you can do it, to do it, um, and that way when you do have an idea for a grant, then you know, it's, we have that money available to you um, to, to kind of be able to fund that. Um, I mentioned about the RME program, you can donate instruments. Um, they can be sent directly to my attention at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. Um, and then what we will do is once they go to Murphy's, they'll get evaluation placed on them and they'll send a letter to the donor so that they can, again, they can use that at tax time as a write-off. Um, businesses can also contact us to donate or individuals not in the district. Um, they can contact me again at the Armstrong Junior Senior High School and we can get them the proper paperwork for doing that. Earlier, you mentioned the educator, educator grant initiatives. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some examples of what new ideas have popped up this year? Yeah, so um, we get, I guess on average, if I had to guess throughout the course of each year, we probably get 15 to 20 grants that are written to us. Um, we, those grants, when they come in, they come specifically to me, and then we have a committee that reviews those. And when they review them, they don't know who wrote them. I block those names out so that way it's a completely unbiased view when they're grading them. So we grade our grants and come up with average scores. And based on those scores, we decide what grants are going to be funded. Um, I would say 95 to 98% of the grants we get in are really good ideas. And if there are grants that don't get funded, a lot of the times it's because we have to prioritize which ones are the best ones. Um, and we to be able to disperse the money that we have available to us. Um, so some of the ones that have come up this year that we found to have a lot of educational value um, was, was a system where uh, teachers are going to write a grant or, and with the money they're going to purchase equipment that can be attached to stationary bicycles. And the point of that was to teach students um, the idea of how much energy it takes to charge uh, electronic devices like cell phones or even a laptop. 
Um, so one of the ideas they had with this, which would be kind of cool, is if students you know, needed to charge their cell phone during school, they could go down to this lab area where the bikes would be set up, plug their phone in, and they would actually be exercising and running the bike, and that would be generating the power to charge their cell phones. Uh, so that was kind of a cool idea that came up. Um, in the past, we also funded, um, for the uh, Family and Consumer Science Program, their um, child care program, where they have the uh, interactive babies. I'm sure you've seen those around mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Um, we funded a grant to help replace those with, with more lifelike uh, models. Uh, and that helps give students a much more realistic um, view of what it's like to have a baby while they're taking care of it. Um, another one, and we got two of these this year, was, was for something called flexible seating. And um, what this is, is it's a research-backed um, evidence behind giving students different types of seating other than your traditional uh, desk and chair to sit at while they're learning. Um, so these grants are written to help purchase different types of things that they could sit at or study from, um, whether it's a beanbag chair or kind of like a lounge type chair, just different learning environment, giving them the option. And it's been proven to show um, that it actually helps in the learning process. Um, so those are some of the new ones that popped up uh, this year and some of the cooler ones that we've gotten. Uh, we also funded one last year that helped start um, uh, an upstart for a garden, uh, a school garden. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of really cool grants and ideas that come in um, throughout that process. So. For those who may be wondering genuine, generally, what requirements or restrictions are in place when teachers apply for these grants? Um, really, there's only uh, two things that we um, kind of restrict. One is, is our grants, especially ones that are funded through our EITC program, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, they do not fund any purchase or covering of a substitute teacher or any transportation costs. So if a teacher were to write a $1,000 grant and $300 of that was for bus, to get buses um, and, a sub, and to cover their sub for the day, we would award the money to them minus whatever the costs were for the transportation. So um, that's the only thing that we don't cover. Um, they can add it in there if they want, but that's something that would have to be covered um, either by themselves or by the school more than likely. So. Now I understand the foundation has an all-volunteer board of trustees. Who serves on the board? Yeah, so our board is made up of different members of both the school district and the community. Um, so I, obviously I'm involved in the school district, I work for the school district, and I'm, I'm involved in the program. Um, uh, Mrs. Paula Berry is a principal at West Hills. Uh, she also serves, and uh, we also have our uh, the district business manager, um, Sam Kirk, and our school superintendent, um, Chris DeVivo are also both members of the foundation. In addition to that, um, Tim Scaife is a representative from the school, Armstrong School District School Board of Directors. And then we also have some community representation. Um, Autumn, uh, or excuse me, uh, Sharon Porterfield is our treasurer, or excuse me, our, um, our secretary. She takes notes on all of our meetings. She's a former employee of the school district, actually. And then we also have um, Terry Thomas, which is a representative from Next Tier Bank. Um, Dr. John Shaner, who is also a former employee of the Armstrong School District, since retired. Uh, Tom Toy is a representative from the, from the um, business side of things in the community. And uh, Carol Lorgan is, our, is a current business teacher in the school district and also serves as our treasurer. The ASD Foundation holds an annual golf outing, which was mentioned earlier. What are some of the details concerning that event this year? Right, so um, real quickly before I jump into that, I did forget one person from the last question. <laughs> um, uh, George Scummy is also a newer member, uh, just joined our board, and is one of the county commissioners from Armstrong County, so I wanted to make sure I didn't leave him out. Um, so with our golf outing, that is our biggest fundraiser every single year. Most of what we are able to fund through our educator grant program is funded through the money that we raise with our golf outing. So what we typically do, um, we changed things up a little bit this past year. Um, we did, it's a, it's a shotgun start scramble tournament style. And um, we can hold up to 20 foursomes typically. And what we will do is res registration usually starts around 8, 8.30 in the morning. 
um, with brunch that's provided by Garda's um, typically starting around 8.30, 9 o'clock. And then by 10 o'clock, and I think this year we're considering moving that up, but no later than 10 o'clock we'll start our shotgun started scramble. And uh, then we also have different items uh, at the turn that, uh, for refreshments and different things like that for our golfers. We provide them uh, like a little um, uh, bag of goodies of some sort, uh, whether it's golf balls or tees or, you know, in the past we did uh, glass, glass mugs that were etched. Um, so we'll provide those to them. And then after the tournament's over, we have just a very brief informal, it's not so much a dinner as it is kind of like a, um, kind of like an informal lunch. Uh, we have different items that are available that are, again, pro provided by Gardas for us. Um, uh, people can come in, socialize afterwards, kind of unwind, grab something to eat real quick, and then uh, we will announce, uh, we just recognize everybody who's donated to the golf outing for the year, and, uh, and we also award uh, different prizes. We have a silent auction, and we have some, cha some challenge holes where we have different competitions that are run. Uh, and then typically people are out of there by 4, 4.30 after that. Um, and this year we're not 100% sure on what the date is. It's looking like it's going to probably be the week directly following the end of school. And I believe school is uh, slated to end somewhere around June 7th this year. So it'll be sometime that next week is what we're looking at. It seems every year the ASD Foundation takes on another project. What is it this year? So this year, um, the big project we took on this year is working with um, Dr. Josh Williams, who's the assistant superintendent for um, grades 7 to 12 in the school district, uh, as well as um, working with the technology department to help fund uh, three, about 300 Chromebooks. And uh, what has happened is the district has started a new initiative, um, Chromebook initiative, where uh, it started with the ELA department and now is moving into the mathematics department. So the goal is, is to get Chromebooks into these teachers so that they're able to use them regularly. And they can do all kinds of different th things like using their new textbooks. Instead of having a physical textbook they purchase, they can uh, use the Chromebooks to work through it. Um, so to help facilitate that initiative, our big thing this year was funding um, about $16,000 uh, worth of Chromebooks for that department. Okay. We are going to take a short break and then be back with more of Armstrong School District's education today. Stick around. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. We are back with education today, and now we are going to briefly cover what EITC dollars are and how they've helped the ASD Foundation. Earlier, we've mentioned source of money that the Foundation has available to it. Could you speak about EI EITC money and what it is and how it's used? Sure, so EITC money is, stands for Educational Improvement Tax Credits. Um, what that is, is it is a source of money that different businesses and, uh, and community, uh, well community businesses, really any business, can donate to a nonprofit organization such as uh, the ASD Foundation. In order to qualify for that, there's a certain series of steps that you have to go through and uh, there's a packet of information you have to renew for it every single year and uh, usually that is in the late summer time that that information is due it gets sent into Harrisburg reviewed and then uh, gets sent and then we either you either get uh, approved or denied if you're approved you go on to a list which can be found on um, the, the Pennsylvania government website and uh, if you're a member of that then you're available to accept these monies um, the way the money is, though, it has to be used for very specific things. And there's a couple of initiatives under this program that you can qualify for. One is STEAM and one is STEM. So what we currently qualify for is the STEM initiative, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. So when we use the money, the money has to be used 
for a program that is connected in some way, shape, or form to, that er to those areas, the science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, for example, one year we funded the STEM Robotics, uh, helped them fund that uh, initiative uh, through the whole school district, okay? And uh, the, the money also has to be used to typically purchase things that usually would not be purchased through a typical school district budget. Um, so the, the things necessary, the items that were necessary to get the robotics class going are things that are outside of the usual budget of the district, so they qualified. Um, in addition to that, we have to write a report on every grant or every, basically we have to account for every cent that we spent or dispersed through the EITC money that we were given. We have to report how much we received and we also have to report how much we spent. So I actually have to write a narrative on every grant that is funded at the end of each year. And that, along with a letter from our superintendent um, saying that he approves and uh, supports the program, has to be sent in, as well as tax information from the district. And then we, when we receive that money, we have two years from the date it's received to, to spend it. So there are often times we're looking for, for, for grants to be written that we can spend that money on. Um, we did have a couple of grants this fall that got written that qualified, and then the Chromebooks and the iPad carts that I talked about earlier, that's how those were funded, through EITC dollars. Okay, to take a step away from, to take a step away for a minute from EITC, for businesses in, interested in donating, what does donating to a nonprofit such as ASD Foundation mean for them? Well, the biggest thing for them is businesses have to, have to, donate X amount of dollars every year. Um, so it's one way to, to satisfy their requirement for doing that. The other thing is it's obviously a tax write-off and a tax break anytime you donate to um, a nonprofit foundation. And the foundation is a, is a, fi is a registered and certified 501c3 nonprofit. So um, that's really the biggest thing for them. But for but maybe even bigger than that is the idea that when you are donating to any, any nonprofit, but specifically to our foundation, you are giving us the opportunity to enrich the lives of students um, in education that they would otherwise never have. Um, and I, I don't want to say never, but more than likely wouldn't have the opportunity. Um, the school district has the Chromebook initiative. That is something that I'm sure they would have figured out a way to make it work um, because it's going to benefit the students so much. But us being here and having that money donated to us was a huge help to both the district and ultimately to the students. And that's really what we're all here for. So I think the biggest thing, you know, if I'm a business person giving money to the, to the school district, the biggest thing I'm looking at is I'm impacting uh, the lives of not only students in the immediate future, but, you know, these Chromebooks can be used for you know, five, six, seven, eight years, you know, their lifestyle, lifespan and new groups of students every year are going to get that opportunity then to use them, so. What is having this money available to the ASD Foundation done? Well, I spoke about what, we were, what we've been able to kind of fund because of these, these dollars. Um, without the EITC money coming to the Foundation, it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, for us to fund the iPad cards, for example. Um, so in our, in our school district, we have the two West Hills buildings, Lenape Elementary, Elderton, uh, Dayton, and Shannock Valley. Um, two iPad carts in each of those buildings, and they ranged anywhere between eighteen dollars and $22,000 a piece. So without that money, th those are things we would have never been able to do. Um, likewise, the $16,000 from this past year that we uh, were able to get the Chromebook cart, um, uh, there were... there's typically 30 Chromebooks per cart, so that money, um, that money helped fund uh, the greater part of 300 uh, Chromebooks. And uh, what that comes out to with carts then is, you know, I think we just put 12, uh, somewhere between 10 and 12 into service uh, in the last couple of weeks in the school district. Um, another thing was the STEM robotics I talked about. Um, the, the grant that I talked about where they are going to buy equipment that connects to the bikes and then generate power and learn about electricity that way, that was EITC funded. Um, the, the babies for the child development program, that was also funded through EITC. Um, and those are expensive programs. Oftentimes, their grants that are written for anywhere between two and $5,000 
with the outliers being those carts that I talked about. So that, that makes up a great chunk of, of what we're able to do, actually. Is there a certain process in the spending of this money that you have to follow? Um, yeah, just what I mentioned um, before, was, which was the money has to be used to fund projects that qualify for the science, technology, engineering, and math, or known as the STEM program. That's nothing new in the state. That's been around for a long time. More recently, they introduced a STEAM program, which takes all of that and includes the arts in it as well. Um, so we're working on becoming officially qualified to be able to fund projects that qualify in that realm as well. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of it has to be used on things that are directly involved with those programs, not typically purchased through the school district budget, um, and then the narrative reports and, and items like that that I have to report back to the state on at the end of each year so that we can continue to be certified in the program. So. What are the future hopes and dreams of the ASD Foundation? Just to continue to support the district and the district students as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, if we somehow got $100,000 donated to us every year, we'll find a way to get that money back into the hands of the to the district students, whether that would be through scholarships that we set up um, or uh, funding grants, helping the district fund initiatives that otherwise, you know, might not be able to be funded right away. Um, you know, it's just we want to continue to bring in as much money as we can so that we can disperse that back to the district as much as we can. Anything else to add for the benefit of our viewers? I'll mention quickly about our grant process, grant writing process. Um, we offer four different grant um, denominations. We have a $500 classroom grant, a $1,000 uh, grade-wide grant, a $2,000 school-wide grant, and then a $5,000 district-wide grant. Um, those are all available on our foundation website, which, is, which can be found either off of the main district webpage or you can go to asdfoundation.org. Um, and there is a link uh, across the top. You'll go to um, funded projects or initiatives, and on the drop down, it'll say educator innovative grants, and then there will be links there for all of those grants. The grant really does not take a lot of time to write. I know there have been some teachers who came to me and said, well, I thought about doing it, but you know, when you think about writing a grant, you think about this very long process. And it really isn't. It's about two pages long, and it's all laid out. We have very specific columns that, say, that ask you just to write down different things like, have you looked for other funding? Who will it benefit? Um, what will you be purchasing um, with the money? Uh, what is your timeline for, uh, for, for executing the project, uh, what are your goals for it, and then um, just at the end of the year we just ask for a brief summary of how the grant went and um, if you met those goals, and then some pictures of the grant in action. So. That's our show for tonight. Every year the ASD Foundation gives our students more and more reasons to look forward to going to school so that they can advantage, so they can take the advantage of these great opportunities. I'd like to thank our guest, Mr. Chris Garantano, Executive Director and President of the ASD Foundation, for being on the show. I'd also like to thank all of the Foundation's donors, individuals, retired, and current teachers, companies big and small, because the ASD Foundation lives by donations. And we also need to thank our film crew. Today we had Armstrong Junior Senior High School students, led by teacher Mr. Josh Miklos, Please bring us again, please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. DVD copies of this and all Education Today programming can be requested by contacting Chris Garantano at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. Visit our website for updated news and information about the district. Have a great week.